Since 2012, Microsoft has given us a new Surface Pro every year, and every year it scored a 1 out of 10 on our repairability scale. Well, we've gotten our hands on the fourth version of the Surface Pro, and we're hoping that this is the one that's going to buck the trend and be much easier to disassemble and repair. Will the Surface Pro 4 get a better score? Let's tear it down and find out. Hi, I'm Gwendolyn with iFixit, and today we're tearing down the Microsoft Surface Pro 4. The Surface Pro 4 measures in at 292.1 millimeters by 201.42 millimeters, is 8.45 millimeters thin, and weighs in at 766 grams. Compared to some other popular tablets on the market, iPad, the Surface Pro 4 is loaded with ports including a micro SD card reader, a Surface Connect port, a USB 3.0 port, and a mini display port. Getting into a Surface Pro has always been annoying to say the least, but we know what to expect. So we pulled out our eye opener, ice clock, and opening picks. We were happy to find that the adhesive is less challenging than previous generations, but our excitement for the easier adhesive was cut short when we saw not one, but two display cables trapped under a snapped on metal shield. In addition to the new connector encasement technique, Microsoft positioned the display cables on either side of the display, far enough from the edges to prevent easy access. Hooray, the 12.3 inch PixelSense display is finally free. This display has a resolution of 2736 by 1824 and a pixel density of 267 pixels per inch. It also has its very own board with a few chips. In particular, we notice a number of Intrig ICs that likely control the hardware for the Surface Pin. Getting our first real look at the insides of the Surface Pro 4, we spy a suspicious gap next to the motherboard. We presume this is for the fan that drives the hybrid cooling system absent from our 4.5 watt Core M3 model. The SSD was next to come out, and fortunately for us, it's only held in place by a single screw. The Surface Pro 4's Samsung-branded SSD appears to be a more standard size compared to previous versions and is a 128GB PM951 SSD. Next out is the new funky-looking heatsink, which has undergone an impressive makeover. It now sports copper heat pipes and a large copper plate for heat dissipation. Designed as a hybrid cooling system, the Pro 4 takes advantage of both passive and active cooling. More powerful models have a fan that activates when temperatures get too high for passive cooling. On our way to the motherboard, we remove the tablet's three cameras, which include an infrared face detection camera supporting Windows Hello, a front-facing 5-megapixel camera, and a rear-facing 8-megapixel camera. The motherboard comes out next, and on the board we see the Intel Skylake Core M3 processor and 4GB of Samsung-made LPDDR3 RAM. To see the complete list of chips we've identified, head on over to the teardown at ifixit.com. Batteries in the Surface Pro line are notoriously hard to get out even with the proper tools, and this battery is no exception. After a lot of heat and scraping, we finally get the battery out and give it a closer look. This is a 38.2 watt hour, 7.5 volt battery that yields 5,087 milliamp hours, less than the 5,547 milliamp hour battery in the Surface Pro 3. Despite the smaller capacity, the 4 generally outperforms the 3. We attribute the majority of this to improved efficiency in design and the size of the processor. We've come to the end of our teardown, which means it's time to talk repairability. At iFixit, it's our mission to teach people how to repair everything, so we give every gadget we tear down a repairability score between 1 and 10. 10 being the easiest to repair and 1 being the most difficult. The Surface Pro 4 got a 2 out of 10, and here's why. On the upside, the SSD is replaceable. The battery is not soldered to the motherboard, but very strong adhesive makes removal and replacement a hazardous chore. Non-standard connectors make for a tricky display removal. The display removal procedure, while difficult and required for any repair, is not as hard as in previous generations due to less stubborn adhesive. But on the downside, the display assembly consists of a fused glass panel and LCD and is difficult to remove and replace. And finally, adhesive holds many components in place, including the display and battery. And that's our teardown. For the complete teardown, including tons of beautiful, high-quality images, head on over to ifixit.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all our latest teardowns and repair videos. You can follow us on Twitter at iFixit and give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com slash iFixit.